The Powers of Satan Strong Delusions God will send strong delusions. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11 So whatever illusions and powers and lying signs and wonders of the devil in the last days God will send the same delusions but stronger. Strong delusions will be sent because the nations rejected the truth. Strong delusions, Revelations 13 and 13. To bring fire down from heaven. Revelations 13 and 3. Another line, signs and wonders. A red dragon is another line wonder. That a red dragon of powers of church and state. Because the power of the dragon is the joining together of two great powers and authority of church and state. Because we see that the, he has seven kings and ten horns. And he has a tail. Revelations 12, 3, and 4. We see the tail of the dragon, which is the false prophet. Isaiah 9 and 15. So we see the image of this great wonder that appeared in heaven. This man of sin having all power and authority of the earth, is there in heaven to exalt his kingdom, his power, and his authority above God. Strong delusions, Revelation 16 and 14, the spirits of devils are performing miracles. Demonic spirits working signs. Revelation 13 and 14 giving idol the power to talk. Revelation 13 and 13 to bring fire down from heaven. Deception. This false prophet has the spirit of Elijah. Because Elijah was supposed to prepare the way for the re for the Lord, for the Lord coming into the world, he was supposed to prepare the way. And that's why John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. And this false prophet that is coming, and his great deception is that he also has the spirit of Elijah. In the days of the son of perdition, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, Did you pay attention to the word showing? And I really, I didn't. I, I didn't pay attention to the word and knowing that every word is a key. And then I paid closer attention. Thinking out loud, showing himself an, ap an appearance, a performance, a line, sign, and wonder showing himself to be God. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. It is a warning from the apostle that let no man deceive you by any means that day will not come unless rebellion the great falling away comes first and then that man of sin will be revealed. You see, we see that it is the falling away. The people fall away through the performance of the son of perdition sitting in the temple showing himself. How is he going to show himself? Not just because he's standing there. He's going to be performing Lines, signs, and wonders that deceive the people into believing he possesses the powers of God. The key of knowledge. There is always a key of knowledge that we receive by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2, here is the key. 
that you be not soon shaken in mind. So the Apostle Paul is warning about the shaking of the mind. Not to be troubled by spirit, nor by words, the Apostle says, nor by a letter from us. So the Apostle certainly knows the signs of the times. And he is trying to encourage those that are gathered together not to be troubled by the rumors about his teaching on the last days. Because the apostle is teaching on the last days when the son of perdition will be revealed in his time. The apostle is warning that what is revealed to them about the last days is alarming. He is warning them of strong delusions coming trying to shake, rattle their minds. He warns against being troubled by spirits. And I tell you this, the great deception and power of Satan through advanced technology of the mind and to control the mind and to brainwash you because the mind is the battlefield where the strong delusions will manifest and shake your mind troubled by spirits demonic influence revelations 91 because the bottomless pit hell will be opened up and spirits unclean spirits and demonic forces will be unleashed upon this earth tormenting many many will be tormented by evil spirits even tormented by the fallen angels that will be set free also, which were bound in chains of darkness and reserved into the day of judgment, but will be set free to torment those that are not sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Paul is teaching the day of the Lord has not come yet, but to remain faithful until he returns. But to watch out for this man of sin, this son of perdition, this master magician. Daniel 4 and 9. The master of illusions, having the spirit of holy gods. Is this what the serpent tried to deceive the woman in the garden with in Genesis 3 and 5? Knowledge to make you as gods, to be a master of illusions. Daniel 4 and 9, the king has portrayed Daniel, his miracles as gifts of the gods, as illusions, having the spirit of gods. In other words, possessed by the spirit of God, to have the knowledge. Even the wise old serpent in paradise desired the knowledge of God, kept in the tree of knowledge. In Ezekiel 28 and 3, Genesis 3 and 5, the serpent said to the woman that this knowledge of this tree would make you as gods. Ezekiel 28 and 3 said you think you are wiser than Daniel and that no secret can be kept hidden from you. Look, you're wiser than Daniel, aren't you? No secret, no mysteries for you. This prince is no different from the son of perdition, those that exalt themselves above God. Now listen up. Daniel received from God, but this prince in Ezekiel 28 and 3 has not because he exalts himself. Ezekiel 28, 2 and 6, like the son of perdition, their hearts are lifted up. Everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God will be cast down. That's what 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says. So the Antichrist uses the knowledge of what the demonic spirits of this world know. After all, they have been here long enough. Is there any secrets? kept from them if we talk they know what is saying what we're saying they hear the words so they certainly those that fell from heaven have a knowledge of heaven and what that they know and they believe about god 
See, Adam knew a little bit more than you and I did because he was in paradise. He was in the third heaven. So what could he reveal to his children? What he knew in the heaven that he were in. All of those that fell from another heaven because they are heaven of heavens of heavens. They would possess the knowledge and the wisdom of that heaven that they fell from. So the Antichrist certainly is using the knowledge of what the demonic spirits of this world know. After all, they have been here long enough, church. And the serpent, the wise old serpent, has powers of a master magician and his workers of evil deception of the powers of the spirits of strong delusions are making themselves rich from this knowledge on practicing to deceive pretending to know all the mysteries, having superhuman knowledge to solve all mysteries, reveal secrets kept hidden, kept secret from the foundation of the world. But in the end, the Lord Jesus Christ himself will prove that they were not wise at all and their great wealth was worthless. What did they gain? They gained nothing. Another key of knowledge, the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 11, showing himself. Therefore is this strong delusion of the power and the lying signs and wonders that we were warned of. Ezekiel 28, 2 through 6, 2 Thessalonians 2 through 3 tells us their hearts are lifted up. They exalt their power, their wisdom above God by sitting even in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Here is a key of power and knowledge received by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. In the book of Revelation 13 and 1, the beast is rising up out of the sea. Isaiah 17 and 12 said that the sea is nations. John said, standing on the sand of the sea, Revelation 13 and 1. Isaiah 10, verses 21 and 22, Israel is the sand of the sea, Genesis 22 and 17 through 19, Revelation 20 and 8, Hosea 1 and 10. Here is wisdom. Here is the key of knowledge. Matthew 4 and 15, the sea. Galilee of the Gentiles. More likely, this is the place the son of perdition will be rising up out of. That's what the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I just love this word. I do. I do. I love this word. It is just so amazing. The Word of God is alive. Glory, hallelujah, and it is powerful. It is powerful. When the Holy Spirit of God gave me that, He said, I will give you a key. I said, yes, my Lord, I'm thankful for every key of knowledge that is given to me for the keys will open the doors and allow me to enter in through the door by the power of the key of knowledge. Now, church, that's amazing revelation knowledge right there. The butter and the honey on the bread and the meat given in due season. The book of Revelation 13 and 1. The beast rises up out of the sea. Isaiah 17 and 12, the sea of nations. John standing on the sand of the sea. Revelations 13 and 1. Is this where the dragon is standing also? Upon the sand of the sea. Israel is the sand of the sea. The sea that the beast is rising up out of, Galilee of the Gentiles, more likely by what the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me. Here we go, church. Here we go. Revelation 10 and 6, the last trumpet will sound and time is no longer. For time itself is an illusion for the mysteries of God will be finished. No more delusions. The mighty angel descended from heaven Swore an oath by God. There would be no more delays. You won't have to wait any longer. 
The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and he says, God is not controlled by time. He is the controller of time. If God controls time, he controls the power of the illusions brought forth by time. For time is an illusion itself. The prophetic word, the appointed time, God has a time for everything. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me. He says, my friend, know the time and the season that you are in. I said, my Lord, please reveal to me how am I to know the season and the time that I am in. He said, with the wisdom of Solomon, my friend. Solomon gave you a key of knowledge, but how many find the keys that are hidden through the words of God? I said, my Lord, they can only be revealed by the power of the Holy Ghost himself, for in seeing we do not see, and in hearing we do not hear. It is only by the power of the Spirit of God that we are to know anything. And the Holy Spirit of God revealed that truth. And he said, this is true. I said, amen. I know it to be the truth. Here we go, church. The Holy Spirit of God said to me, if you will listen to the words of the wisdom of Solomon, for he reveals the future of the last days to you. I said, my Lord, I have read the words of Solomon many, many times. I have not seen where the prophet with the wisdom of Solomon has revealed the future of the last days. The Holy Spirit said, here is wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon, to know your season, your time that you are living in. Here we go, church. Here we go. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. When I read that one, it made me think of Revelation 6, when the sun is black as sackcloth, which is a time of mourning, and then the time to dance when the sun of perdition, I mean, I'm sorry, when Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven. I said to the Holy Spirit of God, these words touched me because all of this that the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me revealed the future to me. A time to mourn and a time to dance. The morning was when the sun was black as sackcloth because sackcloth is mourning. A time to dance because Jesus had returned to bring forth judgment upon those on the earth. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. A time to forgive and a time to be forgiven. A time for salvation, a time for testing and trials, the time of the end, then time shall be no more. I said to the Holy Spirit, truly I see the power of the wisdom of Solomon. And I said to the Holy Spirit of God, how many times, my Lord, have I read those scriptures? I can't count them, church. 
I have read these words time, time, time and again. But until the Holy Spirit of God in his appointed time reveals that revelation knowledge to us, we know nothing. He that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church, let him hear. When I was writing down all of the words that the Holy Spirit of God gave me on the season and the time spoken by the wisdom of Solomon, the scriptures, and due to my time of ticking out here, every time meant something to me in the future. And I know it will, too, because the Holy Spirit of God will go with you, and he will uh, edify that word, and he will establish that word, because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, God will establish his word. And right now, as I am speaking to you, I'm going to share this a quick a vision. God is giving me a vision, and I see Brother Frank, one of my little baby birds, and Sister Angela, another one of my little precious birds. Sister Tanya, I have a vision of my little baby birds hearing this revelation knowledge on the, the season and the time. And they're going to get back with me and put a great big smile on my face. And Sister Laura... Because the Holy Spirit of God is going to go with you. I've already seen the vision, so he is establishing that word with me that it is true. And you will get back with me, or you will make a video. How this word touched you. Because it means something to all of us. It really does. And I am always blessed by my little baby birds. And uh, my husband said something to me the other day. And, and by the way, church, he is doing so much better. And I thank you for every prayer that was lifted up. He is doing so much better. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that God does hear and answer our prayers, and faith does move God. Amen. He said something to me. Do you think the words that you teach, that the church is copying you, that they take your revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God and use it for themselves? I said, no, I don't think that. What I do know by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, that God will edify that word. This is not my revelation knowledge. This is revelation knowledge and wisdom given by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I love the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit of God, a move of God, because you see, I talk with Brother Preston. That's what I was trying to help my husband understand. I talk with Brother Preston on a daily basis, and what I talk with him about, what the Holy Spirit of God has said to me, the Holy Spirit will add to that word. He will edify that good word and bring forth that greater and deeper and higher revelation knowledge. So I certainly encourage my little baby birds I am never offended because you take what the Holy Spirit of God is saying and you come forth with that greater amazing butter and honey on the bread. And Sister Moretta, she's another one too. And Sister Denise, oh, there's just so many of my little baby birds that are so dear and precious to me. And Sister Dion, I am just so blessed by all of you. I am but this is the working of the Holy Spirit. It is a manifestation because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, God will establish his word. I expect him to do that. You see, when I come out here, I'm expecting something. I'm not just coming out here. I'm not just talking. 
I'm not just teaching. I'm coming out here expecting something from you. You can always listen to me, church. You can always take what the Holy Spirit of God has blessed me with and build on it. Because we are to build the house. That was what the Holy Spirit of God said to me when he showed me the foundation of Jesus Christ. And he said to me, now build the house. And I said, my Lord, how do we build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ? He said, with the word of God. The word of God will build the spiritual house. Though it fit framely together through the Spirit. He said, do you understand, my friend, these words? I said, yes, my Lord, I understand your words. So you see, church, when I come out here and I talk to you, I'm expecting something from you. And I've, I see it. And I can be no more prouder than my little baby birds than I am. That you make me smile. You make me laugh. I rejoice with you. I cry with you. Lord, don't let me cry. So I expect my little baby birds to move as the Holy Spirit of God is moving upon you. So let's build a house. Let's frame it up together with the Word of God. I expect, I'm telling you, I saw the vision. I know that uh, my little baby birds will get back with me and they will, they will say to me, I'm telling you, I know it. I, I, I'm speaking into it. I know it. Calling things that be not as though it were because I saw it in the vision. So I know that the Holy Spirit, God is establishing this word with me because it is the season and the time. And here's Solomon and his great wisdom from God beheld the future in Ecclesiastes when he said there is a time and a season because it's true. God has his appointed time. So I cannot wait to see and to hear how this word given by the Holy Spirit of God, church, these, this is not my revelation knowledge. I didn't wake up one day and my eyes were opened and I did anything on my own. I possess no powers. I possess no abilities to see beyond anything beyond me or in the spiritual realm without the Holy Spirit of God. This is his words. This is his revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit of God is the one with the keys. I'm just the messenger he gave the keys to. Because the Holy Spirit of God said to me many, many, many years ago, I was 17 years old when he said this to me, God will not give you the keys to the bank, my friend, unless he can trust you with the money. He said, do you understand what this means? I said, yes, my Lord. That everything that God gives to me, he trusts me with what everything he has given. Truly to whom much is given, much is required. And the Holy Spirit of God said, indeed. So just remember that, church. I'm not that smart. I promise you, I'm not. I'm not that smart to know this revelation knowledge on my own. Please. It is only by the power of the Holy Ghost himself. Oh, how much do I love him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how much do I love him. He better be glad he's a spirit. Because I would grab a hold of him and I'd never let him go. And church, when he's teaching me, it's just so amazing because I will always say to him, hold on, I'm going to need a minute. This is amazing revelation knowledge. This is something. 
I'll jump around my room. I'll even tell the Holy Spirit, hold on, I'm going to have to faint. And I will fall out. I'm not kidding you. So I'm just trying to give you a vision of me falling out on my bed because I'll do it in a minute or I'll lay on the floor. I will. I'm telling you the truth. I'll fall out on the floor and I'll lay there for a minute and I'll tell the Holy Spirit, hold on, hold on, my Lord. Give me a minute. This is deep word. This is revelation knowledge. And he'll wait a while on me. And he'll say, are you all right, my friend? I said, yes, my Lord. But you do know that this is amazing word. And it is beyond my little mind. And many, many years ago, I came to this place in my walk with God that the revelation knowledge become to overwhelm my mind because I had so much knowledge in my mind. And, and I prayed and I said, Lord, the knowledge is beyond my little mind and my little mind is is struggling with all of this knowledge and then the holy spirit of god he said to me i will touch your mind and bring calm in order that you will have the mind of christ to receive the knowledge I'm telling you what, church, when he said that, it hit me. It was like he had already done it that fast, that quickly, that he touched my mind. He did. I'm telling you, church, I'm telling you the truth. And now I take the knowledge and the revelation knowledge and all the keys, and it's all in me, but yet there is calm within my mind because he brought forth that calm to my mind that so I can receive all this knowledge that is in my mind. I'm telling you, church, if you only knew what was all in my little mind, you would say, oh my goodness, I don't know how that woman has all that revelation knowledge and is not gone out of her mind yet because it, it is the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Boy, I tell you, when he comes in, he'll bring that order. He'll bring that calm. Even it reminded me of uh, what uh, someone, a king, I believe it was, in the word of God that said to the apostle that too much knowledge has made thee mad. And I definitely knew what he was saying because truly too much knowledge, uh, even for me, was hard at first for me to hold all that knowledge. But now my cup is running over and it's overflowing and I'm a moving in the Spirit. I'm flowing with the Holy Spirit. I tell you, if you don't have a relationship with God, you don't know what you're missing because He will tell you some stuff. He will reveal amazing things to you. I tell you what, church, I would not change my walk with God for anything. It has been an amazing walk indeed. Lord, don't let me cry. You know, I fear them tears coming on me as the Holy Spirit of God is moving. It is an amazing walk. It really is. And who am I? Who am I, Lord, that you love me that much? Lord, don't let me cry. And I love him with every thing that is in me and I mean that from the very depth of my soul I mean that I love him because I know him I know him because the Holy Spirit of God said to me everything I reveal to you so you will know God because God knows you. I said, thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Church, I love him. I do. And you wait till I see my Jesus. Oh, my goodness. When I see my Jesus, I'm going to grab a hold of him. I'm going to grab a hold of him, and I'm never going to let him go. He is going to have to drag me, me all over heaven. 
When you get there, you'll see me. I'll be the one wrapped around the feet of Jesus everywhere he goes. He's going to have to drag me around because I will never let the, him go. I love him. I do. I love him with everything that is in me. I'll be like Mary that was at his feet, crying on his feet and wiping the tears with my hair. I'm telling you the truth, church. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't even playing over here. And that's what that's the desire of my heart. And the Holy Spirit of God promised me. He did. He said, my friend, you shall have the desires of your heart. If that truly is your desire, you will have it. Well, church, I've done preach this amazing revelation knowledge by the power of the Holy Ghost. Already washed you with my tears. And you have a blessed, blessed day and a victorious one in Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I do love you, church. I do. As the members of the body of Christ, we are to love one another, pray for one another, lift one another up. And that's what we do in the unity of faith in the spirit of love. That is exactly what we do. I call no one to this channel. I trust God to call the children. And if you are called, you are chosen for a purpose and a plan and a will of God. We are all gathered together here by no accident. But to edify one another. So church, like I said... I'm expecting something from you because I can't have you sitting right here in my room with me because if I did, I'd never let you leave because that's me. When I'm preaching this good gospel by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I don't want to let anyone go home and I always tell them, how much time do you have? Take off your shoes, get you something to drink because we're going to be a while. Brother Preston and I, when we get together, oh my goodness, and Brother Larry, oh my goodness, the time that just flies by because we are caught up in the Spirit, in the Spirit, in the presence of God. That is amazing. Ain't no place I want to be, church, but to be in the presence of God. I love you, my dear precious friends. Keep me in your prayers. And you remain in mine. Have a blessed day and think on these things. I'm excited. I am. I'm excited about hearing what the Holy Spirit of God blessed you with through this word. Because you see, church, I can eat with you also. So you come over here to eat with me. I can come over there and eat with you also. So you serve up the butter and the honey on the bread and the meat and due season because I can eat. I can always eat this good word. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. My time is ticking. Have a blessed day, church.